Uh, welcome to the Perfect Body Tone podcast with myself, Fats, and I'm joined with Joe. How are you, Joe? Good, thanks. Yeah, how are you? Very good, very good. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, uh, welcome. It's good to be here. Been on podcast before? First time. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. My wife said to me last night, you're going on a podcast tomorrow. She's like, I'd be shitting myself. I'd lose sleep. I wouldn't get any sleep. But you're just like chilled about it yeah um, <laughs> yeah but it's it's kind of a, a novel experience so i guess a little bit of nerves kicked in this morning i was thinking shit i'm, I'm going on the joe rogan podcast here <laughs> i need to perform maybe, maybe we get up to joe rogan's level we'll do it we'll do it if you're watching joe we're gonna get you on if yeah, you yeah watch out watch out for us <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about yourself you know what you do well, this is obviously about the fitness industry they're gonna want yeah, yeah, yeah. so many um, supplements around us so tell us about you and how long you've been in the fitness game and what you do yeah, so I've been online coaching. That's that's kind of my new thing. I've been doing that for about six months. Yep. Um, but my background is actually in counselling and psychotherapy. So yep. I'm a cognitive behavioural therapist for the NHS and also private. And I'm looking how I can actually develop that into and their elements of the coaching business. Wow. Um, because a lot of CBT is all about facilitating behaviour change. Yep. Getting people to do things differently and think differently in order to feel differently. So that can be applied to coaching. So they kind of cross over. I'm looking at how they can cross over. Yeah. So I'm doing cognitive behavioural therapy, psychotherapy alongside coaching at the moment for work. Um, and I guess I can say I'm a bodybuilder. Yeah, I'm a bodybuilder. You look like yeah. a bodybuilder to me. Cheers, man. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> I don't want to sound like I'm blowing my own trumpet, but it's a fact. I'm currently the British champion, UK DFBA, yep. Masters, Men's Physique, British champion. Bit of a mouthful. So, so you, I, I won that last year. Yeah. Is that the... So I recently seen your Instagram, yeah. and it's... Um, don't underplay your achievements, is it? The video with you... Yeah. You've got the, you've got the medal, and then you're doing it with the... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess that was just about doing something <laughs> a bit funny, a bit humorous in the gym. Um, <laughs> yeah. Again, a few people said, to me god don't you think that'll come across as super arrogant i was thinking well hopefully not hopefully people can see that i'm just fucking about and, and joking that's what you want you, you want that kind of jokey side that approach yeah. side the last thing you want is somebody sitting online telling you what you can do how you can do it and not having a joke side not having a human side yeah. not having a you know yeah. there's a lot of when i do videos i do bloopers as well because people want that kind of human touch they do yeah yeah i mean for me it was about um if I'm totally honest, getting some eyes on my Instagram page so yep. people can have a look at the serious stuff as well that I'm, and the helpful stuff that I'm hopefully giving over. Um, but yeah, a bit of a laugh as well. Never goes amiss. For people that didn't see it, it's basically me in the gym, flashing my medal around, <laughs> curling my trophies, you yeah. know, and running around the boxing ring celebrating like I've just won the world championship. No, I um, found the humorous stuff. It was, yeah, it was a nice yeah. approach. Yeah, definitely. thanks, man. Yeah. Do you feel like there's a lot of people in the industry who are maybe not so approachable because they're so serious? I guess there's all types of people in the industry and there's nothing wrong with any particular approach because that kind of thing, very serious, very knowledgeable, um, that'll appeal to some people. Yeah. Um, whereas something that's, you know, maybe a lot of swearing, maybe a lot of joking around, like real laddish behaviour, yeah. maybe. All different things are going to appeal to different people. So I think you've just got to be yourself, haven't you, and find your own path through. Definitely. Selling yourself yeah. is, is something I think a lot of people don't realise. People buy from people. They don't buy from, you know, some brand or something like that. They, your mm. brands put, you know, when you're more human, it's more approachable and you're yeah. more likeable. Yeah. Well, someone said to me when I was starting out, I was chatting to a mate um, and he was saying, I was, th I was saying, well, what name can I come up with for my coaching brand? Yeah. I came up with all these like names and, and different words and that. And he's like, well, why don't you just use your name? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're the brand. Yeah. And so that's what I went with in the end. Yeah. And how was that going for you? It's going all right. It's, it's, I think most people that, um, that are in it know that it's quite a crowded market. It's quite competitive. Yes. Yeah, um, so, you know, it's just about being consistent, being patient, building it up. Um, I haven't got loads of experience of coaching people in this way yet. Yeah. So, um, I, but I have got my own experience. I've got my own physique, which I can showcase. Um, but you need to build up what we call like social proof. Yeah. To show your results. So they're starting to come in now, having been working with people for a little while. But I think it will gather momentum. And my goal for this year is not necessarily to make a shitload of money through it or get yeah. a load of clients on my caseload. Caseload? That's coming <laughs> from the counselling side. <laughs> uh, on my books. Yeah. Um, it's really just to build the foundations and to, to get as good as I can at the craft, really. So that's, that's my goal for the year. 
Yeah, like you say, it is a very competitive market, this online coaching. Everybody's yeah. an online coach. I feel like a lot of people just come out of university or college, you know, they've got a coaching degree, mm. um, and they just go straight, that's it, I'm online, now I'm going to make money. Yeah, yeah. So you feel like, do you feel like it's more you've got to have a passion for the results rather than the money? Because I think a lot of people just go for content and money, and that's it, they're going to be rich. Yeah. I think, I think yeah, you've got to have... Um you, you've got to want the money because yeah. you've got to put the work in and, you, and there's nothing wrong with being motivated by that side of it but you've got to genuinely want to help people as well and I think you've got to have for me I've got I've got a passion for bodybuilding so yeah. my approach to helping people um, lose weight because a lot of people are coming to me wanting to, to, to lose weight I lose fat really change their body composition so my approach to it and I'll be very honest with them is a bodybuilding approach it's yeah. kind of all the um, the techniques that I've used to cut and strip down body fat for like a photo shoot or a competition, yeah. I will share those techniques with them and we'll, we'll try and make it fit to their lifestyle and their goals. But that's, that's my approach. So I think you've got to have a passion for what you do and the way you do it. Yeah. And not try and do something you're not into just because it pleases a particular demographic of people. Yeah, you're going to end up being very unhappy with yourself and unhappy with your clients because you're in an industry where you're just chasing money rather than a passion. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong in life. They they hate their job, they hate what they do, they hate their career choice, but it mm. pays the bills and then it's a comfort zone and um, yeah. you wake yeah. up one day and you regret a lot. Yeah, something that I noticed um, a few years back was a lot of people... A lot on podcasts and stuff, I was hearing a lot of people talk about having got into careers where they do earn a lot of money yeah. straight out of uni, you know, like financial services, you know, these these high, quite high paid professions, maybe IT, yeah. and then they're hitting maybe ten the ten year point in their career, and I heard a lot of people saying things along the lines of, you know, I, I don't care so much about the money now. I want to do something where I, I feel more fulfilled, helping people, give something back. Maybe they're using that kind of language. For me, it's kind of been the other way around to some extent. Yeah, I've done I've done counselling for a long time. I did care work with people with learning disabilities before that, and it's it is fulfilling work. But the money's not quite there. Like a job in the NHS. Yeah, um, you know. A, a, a kind of high skilled NHS employee is going to earn like 40 to 45 grand, something like that. Whereas someone at a, a similar skill level, similar qualification level in something like IT, I was talking to a mate the other day who's in IT, 80 plus thousand. So it's kind of double. Yeah. And so I've got to a point in my career where, where I am more money motivated now, where I wasn't in the past. So the inverse of what I'm hearing other people say. So what's the main thing that you get? From people who come to you and say, I want to change, is it their fitness levels, is it their health, has there been a health scare because of the, all the lockdowns and things that we've been through, or is it, I want to lose weight, I want to shred? Yeah, for most people it is about changing like the way they look, Yeah. so to, to lose body fat. Um, a lot of people use the word toned, Yeah. which I kind of have had a, a bit of a, a bugbear with it, I, I don't really like that word, because like, what does it mean, toned? Yeah. For me it means reducing body fat. So that the muscle you've got is more more visible, yeah, and, and more conditioned. Um, but that's just that, that's my intolerance of a particular word. But yeah, so most people are looking to change the way that they look. Um, but with that, obviously, comes health benefits. Yeah, um, increased confidence. Yes, so better mental health as well, so better self esteem, so. um, better family life, more energy. It has a big impact, I think. But then, yeah, some people will come with a different priority, like to just increase their fitness or performance or strength yeah. or overall health, and that will be their priority. So, yeah, I think a, a good coach needs to be able to cater to all those things and kind of set up the plan within reason, not not kind of completely compromising their values or yeah. what, what they do or going beyond their expertise, but they do need to adapt, I think, to a particular person's goals. Yeah. So when you said about confidence just then, you just said confidence and it clicked in my mind. A lot of people don't realise the mental aspect of going to the gym, working yeah. out. A lot of people are suffering with different mental health issues. They yeah. go straight to the doctor, they get all these medications and people don't realise getting out in nature is one of the best things mm. for your mindset. Definitely. Going to the gym is one of the best things for your mindset. With your clientele, with the work that you do, do you see a lot of people you know, overcoming these mental health issues, um, becoming more confident, happy, energetic? you know bringing out a new side of themselves personally mm, mm. well I'm going to talk about some of my experience from psychotherapy so yeah. I work with people with depression yeah and a lot of the time people with depression have become what we call deactivated yeah so they're very inactive like when we get when we get depressed when our mood dips for whatever reason something something 
like lots of different things could trigger that but we we then want to take the path of least resistance we want to sit on a sofa we want to scroll social yeah. media we want to binge watch netflix we want to overeat we go for the the easiest path through life that's your got... satisfaction so... yeah it's partly that isn't it i think um that instant gratification yeah yeah what's yeah. going to make me feel good right now yeah um but and that is very seductive that, that that sort of path of least resistance and that instant gratification but ultimately it can keep you really stuck and, and unfulfilled yes um because you have too much netflix too much scrolling too much comfort food too much doing nothing it's not good for your mood no and so, long terms you're going for that short-term satisfaction which takes you away from your long-term goal exactly yeah 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 you realize that actually you're just stuck somewhere you don't want to be so how would somebody get over that? They're taking these short-term satisfactions, they're going yeah. for the cake rather than the run, but they want that shredded body, but they just keep giving in to the Netflix, yeah, to the yeah. chill, to the food. How can they get over that? Well, well, if we just take the fitness side out of it and just think about the mental health side for a moment, um, what you would do in therapy is get someone more active. You would do activity. Well, first of all, you'd, you'd get them to take an overview of, of what they're doing. What yeah. are their behaviours? And what effect is that having on their mood? So you get them to kind of become more aware of that setup. And um, you can get them to document it. You know, I did this and I felt like this. I yeah. did this and I felt like this. And then you start activity planning with them. And you identify... Um, we talk a lot about antidepressant medication. Yeah. So everyone's heard of antidepressants. So many, yeah. yeah. And a lot of people take them, which there's nothing wrong with, by the way. They can be uh, a very useful tool to overcome mental health problems. But in my opinion, they are over-prescribed. There's an over-reliance agreed. Massively on agreed. And a lot of the time, people's mental health problems are not actually about brain chemistry, which is what the medication's addressing. It's about environmental factors, lifestyle factors. So what I encourage people to think about is antidepressant behaviours. Yeah, so you've heard of antidepressant medication. Let's think about antidepressant behaviours. What what could you do that's going to make you feel less depressed, make you feel happier? Um, and it's very individual, so you need to get get them to identify what those things are, and equally what the depressant behaviours are. Okay, so watching too much Netflix that's having a depressant effect on me. Yeah, do less of those things, more of the antidepressant behaviours. So I I personally think that exercise. Massively, can be yeah. a, a great antidepressant behaviour for most people. But there are so many different forms of exercise. I like going and lifting weights, and if you want to have a muscular physique, then that's what you're going to need to do, resistance I training. that's the issue with a lot of people. Um, they, they will see exercise as an enemy. But there's, like you say, there's so many different choices of exercise. If you like Zumba, you could go to Zumba. If yeah. you like a, you know, a dance class, you could do BJJ, you could do boxing. Mm. I mean, you, you could go out there and do gymnastics. Something that you're passionate about or find a passion in. You know, it could be CrossFit. Whatever it is, mm. you might find something you love, but it gets you moving. It gets you active. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that's what people don't see. They don't see the broad aspect of the fitness industry or being more active exercising will help my mental health, it will help my energy, will help my confidence, will change my life, mm. but they only see the gym as a negative. I'm not going to the gym because I'm going to be anxious and I don't want yeah. to be big. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there's so many different types, aren't there? There's so many different things to choose from to get your body moving and, and to feel good. Um, they're going to achieve different results. So I've done half marathons in the past. And the muscle just melted off me. Yeah, as you said, that sounds horrible. 12, 14, <laughs> 16 week training. Um, so like I, say some, stuff. I say to my clients, like, if you want to build muscle or retain muscle while you're losing fat, yeah. long distance running is probably not the best form yeah. of cardio. And we want cardio to be very low intensity so it's not taken away from our resistance training performance. Somebody said to me the other day, he um, came to me and he said, uh, I don't know why I'm not putting on any muscle. Uh, I want to be more shredded. I want to get bigger. Yeah. Um, I was like, okay, so what are you doing at the gym? He goes, yeah, I get on the treadmill a lot uh, and the cross trainer. Stop that. Stop okay, that. Yeah. <laughs> Stop that. Yeah. yeah. The way that I've been taught to do it by my coach um, is when I'm cutting, resistance training will still be like the priority. That will yeah. be, be, be the foundation of my, my training. But then we'll use cardio as a tool to um, implement that calorie deficit. But it'll be low intensity, steady state cardio, LIS, as opposed to high intensity yeah. interval training. Um, so heart rate between 130, 140 BPM. So uphill treadmill, I did a lot yeah. in my prep. Um, I had to 
upgrade to the Stairmaster as I got fitter and my heart, I couldn't get my heart rate to 130 because I was fitter yeah. without putting the incline like, like a fucking mountain. You know I mean? <laughs> so we went onto the stairs instead, yeah. which is brutal. So, so you're going back going back to like, like there being lots of types of fitness, just one, yeah. one thing I wanted to say on that is people sometimes ask me what's the best form of training that I can oh, do or yeah, what's the best on. form of cardio I can do. And my answer is not like, what I think is optimal, not necessarily what I've just described. I think the answer from a coach, to some extent, needs to be, well, which one are you going to hate the least? Uh, or, oh, so yeah. More optimistically, so which enjoy, one are you going to like yeah. the most? Yeah, let's, so let's make it positive. So you're beating yourself up to go to it, but you actually enjoy it, so you're more willing to go. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I could tell someone what you need to do is go to the gym and lift weights like I do. Yeah. But if they if they hate that and they're not going to do it, that's not optimal, is it? No. Not at all. Um, I once had an ex-girlfriend and I said, I want to come to the gym, come to the gym. She, you know, she was always on about weight and she wasn't happy. I don't want to go lift weights with you. You don't have to come lift weights with me. You just come yeah. to the gym. And then in, in most people's heads, automatically, you hear gym and you think, I don't like lifting weights. No. Um, but like, there's so many different things that you could do in the gym, not with classes, but in the gym. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to go to the gym and change their body, what would you think the first piece of advice or the first thing to get them hooked or the first thing that you could say to them when it's their first time in the gym, this first time that they want to change, it's the first time that they're going to venture out and listen to somebody? That's a good question. Yeah, I think, I think again, what we need to ask them is what, what they want to achieve. Yeah. Right? What, what they want to kind of look like, what, what physique do they want to create? Um, because we need to be guided by what's going to be effective to achieve yeah. that goal. But then balance that with, you know, what, what kind of training are you going to tolerate and actually adhere to? And, and, and follow the plan with um, so you've got to weigh up those two things but if someone said to me I want a physique like Brian Terry yeah. um, I'd probably say they need a time machine <laughs> go back in time <laughs> take steroids from a young age yeah. <laughs> um, change their genetic pattern but yeah. yeah so that's unachievable but you know someone saying they, they want to build muscle have, a, have quite a muscular physique um, then I'd be, I'd be saying right we need a resistance training program and you need to be lifting with intensity yeah taking lifts to failure there's there's always different approaches and different ways that can work yeah so a, a lot of um a lot of bodybuilders obviously lift very heavy someone like ronnie coleman notorious as <laughs> yeah. was like a power lifter lightweight baby exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah lightweight baby ain't nothing yeah, with a beam he's a, like. <laughs> he's a legend yeah. yeah yeah i saw him actually in person at a distance i might add i went to the um the arnold's the first uk uh, arnold's a couple of years ago ones? yeah it was at the nec yeah, yeah yeah i met with my coach lewis actually um and and went along to that so that was great for two reasons meeting up with my coach because he's based up north in hull yeah so it's a long distance relationship <laughs> Um, so it's really nice to meet up and we met up there and we went to the Arnold's and man he was he was so into it because he's Lewis Lewis Widgery is his name based up in Hall very good coach highly yeah. recommend um, but he's going for his pro card and he has nice. been for some time it's very competitive in classic physique to get that pro card um, but um He's going for it. He went for it um, last year and he got to the British finals, two bros, and uh, came second. He was one point away from the winner oh, wow. who he'd beaten in the regional previously. So it was so close. He was as close as you can get to getting that pro card. Um, so I'm rooting for him next time around this year. He's going to get there. Nice. It's only a marathon. But anyway, we went to the Arnold and um, a fire was lit in Lewis. I could see, see yeah. all these pros up on stage, the, the classic pros, the open guys, like big guys, you know, top top guys in the industry um, and I could see like his eyes had lit up and like, it was brilliant to like see a that kid but, in a candy shop yeah, yeah but mine too as well I saw the men's physique guys and I thought yeah like I'm never going to be as big as them yeah but I want to do that like something going to a big show like that yeah. or any bodybuilding show I think if you're sitting on the fence go along and see it and, and you might get the buzz and a bit more of a drive a bit more of a buzz a yeah, few people yeah. I've spoke to they've said they've gone through a lot of these shows and these, these meet and greets um, one you get to see so many like new supplement soup new products um, that yeah people, oh like the expos yeah, yeah so a lot of that a lot of people have gone from down here and uh, mm. a friend of mine from Scotland he went down and he travelled all the way from Scotland down to Birmingham and he was saying yeah. it's amazing the buzz the people you meet the mindset of people and it kind of just drives you a lot more to yeah. get around that industry I think that's it with any industry. If yeah. you're in business, you go to business shows or entrepreneurship. Yeah. But um, I've never been to one of these. I think it's something that I need to experience. I've, I've never been to an expo. Um, my mate, actually, um, a guy called Steve Orton, who I went to school with, yeah. he's one of the head guys at Body Power, oh, which wow. was one of the big shows in Birmingham for a while. Yeah. I don't know if they're still doing it now. 
I know the Fit X have, have stepped into that space. They do they do big expos now. Um, but going back to the Arnold, yeah, Arnold was supposed to be there, but he had some lame excuse like he'd hurt his leg, couldn't uh, fly over here, which was a shame. But he came in on satellite link, which was cool. Nice. But Ronnie Ronnie Coleman came on stage, hobbled on. Oh, present, yeah, because he's in a bad way, isn't he? Well, he's on his way yeah. back up now, isn't he? He's doing a little bit better, because at one know. point he couldn't do anything. There's that documentary on Netflix about him, isn't there? Where yeah, I haven't seen that. Him. That's good, actually. But his, his back is, is just ruined from, from the load that he put on it over the years. So going back to there being different ways to train, you can go real heavy, yeah. real heavy. But I think that you, the wear and tear on your body from that, I mean, you could end up with in, injuries like Ronnie. So what's your mindset on um, a lot of, I see a lot of it in the gym, I see a lot of young guys, ego lifting. Yeah, so this, this is it. I suppose like some people load up the bar like that yeah. to fuel their ego. Um, I've obviously got an ego, yeah. I have to keep it in check, but I don't feel I need to prove myself in that way. No. I do, I do believe in kind of training smart, and I think I've heard Ronnie compared to Jay Cutler before, who, who's like multiple time winner of, of the Olympia as well yeah. and um, he, he trained in a different way to Ronnie apparently um, where he, he didn't load up like that he didn't, he didn't lift like a power lifter um, he trained smart, he did more time under tension higher reps and he's, he, he's in a better place physically you could argue than yeah. Ronnie um, he's fitter, he, he, his joints and his tendons and his, his musculoskeletal system is, yeah. is a, in a, a much better place so I think I personally train i don't go heavy like some people do yeah not all the time anyway sometimes there's a place for that and i have in the past but now it's it's thinking more about volume yeah in terms of sets and reps it's thinking more about time and attention a lot of pausing um and that's what my coach is on board with and that's what he's programmed for me to do and, and so far it seems to be working but there is an argument that there's a place for that but actually there's no substitute for yeah. <laughs> lifting some weight and moving some load. I used to be the same. So when I was years ago, I was on a lot of gear um, as a young man, um, taking anything I'd get my hands on, going down there, ego lifting, grunting mm. real loud, going twice a day, hour yeah. in the morning, hour in the evening. I mean, my body was getting beat. Yeah. But it was, uh, you know, I was stacked. I was looking good. I was probably feeling terrible, but because I had so much in my house. Were you? Yeah. yeah. Um, I was sweating non-stop. There was right. no yeah. point. How was your skin? Because that can be affected, can't it? Uh, a bit of acne on the back. Yeah, um, yeah there was a, a, a lot of tests, Debo, um, Deca, yeah. um, a okay. little bit of the gyno. Okay. Um, so what what did you have to do about that? Cause I've heard the gyno? Yeah. Uh, so basically I took uh, Nova all the way out. Anything I did, and I was taking, what is it, AIs? I was taking anything that anybody gave me yeah. to fight the gyno. At one point it got really embarrassing. Um, I was so worried about gyno because... The nipple pointed out a little bit. I actually went to the hospital and was like, there's a lump behind my nipple. Right. And the doctor took one look at my body and one look at my tear and he goes, do you take steroids? I was like, yeah, why? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to play it off. Yeah. yeah, why? And I was like, how does he know? How does he know? Yes, guy, no, just stop taking steroids. See you later. <laughs> like, it's not that simple, though, is it, once no. you start? No, no. Um, luckily for me, they go down, you know, and yeah. there's nothing left. So I'm, I'm really happy. There's little lumps behind, mm. but come off all the gear and, you know, it Completely, no TRT or anything? At the end of it, yeah, I come off uh, and mm. um, cycled off. But, yeah, it was a big scare at first, but mm. I was on for so long and there weren't no break periods. There was just, I'd get on a bulking stack and then I'll go straight into a cutting stack and then I'll go straight to a bulking stack. Right, <laughs> you know, there was right. no clearing my body out. Yeah. And a lot of people say to me, what's the point of clearing your body out anyway? Mm. Um, just stay on, just take a lower dose. And I'm like, is that the right way so to you go? Have, you, I don't know loads about steroids, but you have a blast, which is a higher dose, right, where you're in a gaining phase, is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have a cruise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and I see a lot of people, they cruise, and there was, you know, a few people that have gone to the gym that have just cruised, even if they're not working out. And I'm like, mm. you're not working out. It's, what is it doing for your body? And they're yeah. like, yeah, but it's just, I think it's more of an addictive thing. Once you start, okay. you just don't stop. And also, I suppose, where you're supplementing your testosterone levels, what I've heard is they don't naturally come down or go back up yeah. to, that, to that level without the assistance. Is that right? Yeah. Or um, it takes time. So, yeah, when I was doing it back then, there was a point that I had to go to um, the steroid dealer and say to him, um, this guy is ridiculous. I've come off all the gear. I've taken everything that you told me to take um, PC 
post cycle therapy. Okay. I've done all that. Why is it not going back up? And he was like, all right, you need to inject this stuff into your belly. And it was that live substance, and he was like, this should help boost it. And I was like, oh, okay. Was that not alarming, being told, right, you've just got to put more substances into your body now? Uh, back then, I was young and foolish and just yeah, full fearless. of testosterone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even if it wasn't my own testosterone. But I think a lot of young people jump straight on gear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've heard that and I've seen that. And I think um, the advice from a lot of highly respectable industry professionals is is if you're a young guy or girl yeah. to uh, see what you can do naturally first maybe even compete naturally yeah. before you jump on gear i think you know gear gets a really bad rap and i think that's partly because people don't openly talk about it like no. we are now it's kind of or it has been in the past very hush hush yeah um and that doesn't do any favors for the image of it and and a lot of people misunderstand it and think it's it's cheating yeah and that it's easy if you're on gear but You've just basically lifted the ceiling of what you can achieve. Yeah. But like you can achieve a much bigger, more vascular physique if you're on gear. You're still going to have to fucking work for it. Just as hard, <laughs> if not harder. I had to find out the hard yeah. way now. Yeah, training yeah. twice a day just to destroy my body. But yeah, it just yeah. helps you repair quicker and, and get optimum yeah. results. Yeah. And I've always said to people, who are you cheating if you're not in a competition? And they're mm. like, no, you're cheating yourself. You should do it naturally. Yeah. But it's a level playing field, isn't yeah. it? You know, in, in PCA, two bros, federations, everyone's on gear. Yeah. It's just normal. You get, in fact, there was a guy um, who competed in the same show that Lewis, my coach, competed in, I think it must have been 2020 or 2021, the British finals, two bros. Yeah. Um, and he, I think he won the classic natural. Jesus. Bob Waterhouse. Good man. Incredible physique. Like just the most aesthetically pleasing physique. Wasn't the biggest on stage, but he just blew everyone away with condition and just the genetics. Incredible. Nice. Yeah. Good, Check that, him man. out, Bob Waterhouse. He's Bob Waterhouse. amazing natural athlete. Yeah. I was very surprised as a young man. Totally natural. Um, um, so when I first started training, it was a whole chicken every day. So I worked at Sports wow. Direct. So it was a whole chicken. In my half an hour lunch break, so I'd go to Asda, buy a That's whole chicken. That's <laughs> impressive. <laughs> what was the disgusting. rotisserie? It was disgusting, yeah. <laughs> so, Any carbs or? Um, no, a pint Just... of milk to wash it down. Wow. <laughs> and, you know, I've got 30 minutes to go to Asda, pick up my chicken, go back with my pint of milk, and I'll just demolish the whole chicken as fast as wow. I could. Because in my head, that's all protein going into my body, and that was yeah. all I was thinking about. And milk, more protein. So as a young age, sitting the blue there, top, <laughs> uh, yeah, top yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm getting Get really fat in, yeah. yeah, I just didn't care. I wanted to stack, stack, stack. And um, that's when I first started training when it was fitness first in Eastbourne, um, and then I'd go to the gym. But I would only train chest for six months. <laughs> What? And then you take chest training out? Uh, uh, no, it was just, I didn't have oh, any Oh, you experience. mean you didn't, you didn't, didn't train know. any other body part no. apart from chest? Wow. So I got, and I wouldn't do free weights either. So it was chicken, milk, three protein shakes a day as well. Yeah. So around that, I was having three protein shakes. One in the morning, one after a workout, and one kind of midday sometime. Uh, and I got really big. Because um, I did that for six months, and my chest just went... Psh. Yeah, I bet. Uh, so I just sat on the, you know, the... And a machine where you just put the weight and it yeah like yeah. a pin loaded machine yeah and I was just doing chest but it was the sit up one and that and and then I'll do chest and then I'll go do abs and then I'll come back and do chest and then I'll go do abs then I come back and do chest and I'll wow. do a bit of bicep and it was literally the young man's training yeah arms chest forget the rest <laughs> I like that I've not heard that before yeah. <laughs> and that was all I did um, to the point somebody goes oh your chest's really good and somebody I worked with and goes have you ever done a back day I was like. No way, he goes, let's not even talk about your legs. <laughs> oh, legs. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, I do legs. Shh. <laughs> it's like as good as cardio for me. <laughs> so, yeah, and then I had to do back day. And then it was, um, I think, about three months of chest, back, arms, chest, back, arms. Okay. Chest, and then again, it's, legs. It's, were, it's getting more varied. Yeah. yeah, legs. I don't think I hit legs for the first year and a half really? of going wow. to the gym. Yeah. Um, so what would be your advice for young guys who are doing arms, chest, forget the rest? Um, to train the other body parts, <laughs> essentially, yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, we, we talked earlier about um, doing what exercises you like. Yeah. 
but you've got to draw the line somewhere. I think, you know, you, you don't... Well, did you end up with, like, a massive upper body and then little skinny legs? Oh, yeah, for a long time, yeah. yeah. So whenever I come to summer, lucky, we live in the UK and there's not much sun. Um, so it was trousers. Um, but when I did wear shorts, a lot of people were like, skip leg day, Psh, look at his really? legs. Yeah. No calves. <laughs> yeah, there was no calves. I mean, you can train calves for, you know, years, you know, twice a week and still not grow much. <laughs> yeah, it took me a long time to even get the calves that I've got. Mm. And they went down. It was when I was on a lot of gear and I was, I was training calves because I was like, I cannot wear shorts and be so big on the top half and yeah. have these little pin legs. Yeah, well, I think for me, I want like quite a balanced physique and I've, yeah. I've completely in men's physique so some people would say that's not not proper bodybuilding um and, and you know take the piss out of men's physique but i still train legs yeah you know once a week maybe not i used to train it twice twice a week hit legs sounds but, horrible <laughs> yeah yeah i'm not a fan of leg day in some ways because it is you're using such a big muscle group it takes so much energy yeah i can't train legs with someone like, i can't go with the train park because i can't really talk yeah between my sets i'm fucked i'm having to hold on intense. to stuff my yeah. legs are wobbly but I suppose um, if you don't feel like that, you're probably not training hard enough. This is true. Yeah. So what would be your biggest advice for people who want to get bigger legs? They want those bigger calves. Because it's, it's desirable as soon as you put on some stack on the big top end and people yeah. start taking the piss out of your little end. Yeah, um, I think hitting legs twice a week, if you really want to develop them, is, is a good way to go. But you've got to think about recovery because like, they are a very big muscle group. I, probably the only body part that I still get DOMS in. I, oh. so I, my leg, I trained... Um, train legs on Sunday my hamstrings even today still yeah oh, <laughs> but to be fair I'd had the week off legs the week before because I'd been a bit ill I'd had a cold so I think that's why the dom's setting because I had a bit of a gap um, so yeah don't skip leg day like me even don't if you've got skip a cold day. no <laughs> and definitely don't do a year and a half like I did and never yeah. do leg day <laughs> no no yeah so for, for those young lads who want to want to grow their legs I think um, getting the big compound movements in at least once a week I, I really like the hack squat yeah um, I like leg press I like single leg press actually so I've yeah. had to drop the weight no ego lifting yeah nice. and just press it nice and slow with a single leg and a little bit of a, a pause at the bottom so we're not bouncing off the bottom yeah um, so looking at form as well um, but thinking if you do two leg days a week ideally get a coach to to help you come up with the program design yeah but I think you want to think about like hitting the different parts of the leg having slightly different focus from leg day one to leg day two if you're just hitting quads on both days then you're going to struggle to recover from that so you might want a hamstring focus day um, Um, maybe like a glutes focus day yeah Um, you want to build that peach bum oh I used to have one of them yeah uh, yeah so um Working in the night industry, I wear black trousers, um, dormant trousers, and a lot of people just say, you have a great bum, and then I stopped going for the gym for a long while, and a lot of people said, you lost your bum, I was like, man, um, it's really desirable by women, a lot of women like a peachy bum on a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, and yeah. I didn't realise until I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> you need to do those, what are they called, those glute raises, that, pe- that, that all the girls do in the, in the gym shark leggings, yeah. guys need to do that too. Hip thrust, that's what they fr- Yeah. Um, that was it last night. So I was working at the club last night and a, a young uni student, she goes, uh, we were just talking and she come over and goes, what's your max thrust? I was like, what do you mean? I and I that. automatically assumed that she meant dancing. So I did a dance little, I was like, that's, that's what I got. She was like, in the gym, idiot. I was like, no, I look stupid. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's nice to hear that the ladies are, are, are yeah. saying, you know, what's your max on yeah. something? The thrust, yeah. Yeah, and she was like 140. I do 140, and she was tiny. Really? I was like, wow. Yeah. I, I need to I up my game. <laughs> I could not do that. I looked at her, I was like, I need to up my game. Yeah. What am I doing? I trained with a guy once, and um, he, I was like, we'll do the hip thrust now. And he's like, I ain't doing that. Uh, I like, why not? He's like, that's for women. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, let's load it up, see what you can do. I, I also trained um, with a lady, Laura, down at Boss Gym, uh, and she we went through one of her leg days. And the whole time, I was like, "Come on!" And it, what's that one where they they, they spread out, and spread out? Yeah, the um, abductor. Yeah, that was yeah. horrible. That mm. was not the one. The abductor. No, 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 no. It's nasty. You get nasty doms from that as well. Yeah, I was yeah. like, "This is killing me." And the abductor where you squeeze. I think I've got it the right around. Abductor, abductor. Yeah, it's getting mixed up, but yeah. The squeezy one, the push one. The squeezy one, one, the push one. So, with legs, 
A lot of guys will say that they don't skip leg day, um, but calves, how can they get the calves bigger? What's the, you know, the three best exercises or the, or the main exercise that they could do for calves? And is there different calf muscles to train? Yeah, so I'm, I don't know the, the, the anatomical science behind it, but what I've found out or been told by people that know more than me yeah. is that you can hit calves in different ways. So a standing calf raise, yeah. I use the machine at Bosch Gym, will hit the calf in a certain way, a part of the calf, I think it's the upper part. Yeah. Um, and then if you do a seated calf raise, where you're pushing up uh, in yeah. a seated position, that's hitting the calf in a slightly different way. So I try and do both of those. Yeah, they've got I mean, both of those yeah, at Boston. They yeah, yeah. Yeah. They've also got that one, I think it's called the donkey calf race. You seen Is that, that the one where you, you like bend over? over? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that you looked a bit fruity for me. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at that, I was like, I wonder what kind of games. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm Give it a go, I reckon. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've not me. used it to be honest either. I've <laughs> seen Roy using it and he knows what he's doing, so yeah. yeah oh, I'm gonna use it then, yeah. Roy's go. done it. He's good enough for Roy. And Roy's got good legs. Yeah, yeah. I reckon he's got good calves. Good man, yeah. Because calves are a lot of big ones for a lot of people. People want big legs, but yeah. mainly they just want big calves because that's your skinniest part. It's the part that's most exposed as well. Yeah, I think it's about putting enough volume through them as well because they're smaller muscles and uh, like the arms, they're just going to need more more reps, going to need more volume. Yeah, definitely. So in terms of recovery, in terms of looking after yourself, you know, there's a lot mm. of people watching it or, or listening and they... they we, we spoke about legs, we spoke about muscle gains, we spoke about getting in there. Uh, Supplement-wise... Yeah. Um, what do you take yourself for supplement wise? Um, yeah. Your so, three main supplements that you love? Yeah, let's something? go with the three main ones because my stack is pretty basic. I've seen people taking all kinds of supplements for <laughs> liver health, heart health, kidney health, oh, brain God. health. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and for me, it's, it's quite simple. I use a, a whey protein. Yep. Um, so I use Perform actually, which they got in here. Yeah. It's a very, very nice flavour. They've nailed the flavours. What like, flavour did you like? So I like blueberry muffin. Oh, that is banging! Ooh. It tastes just like a blueberry muffin. It's so good. Um, having yogurt, Greek yogurt. It's what really in good. with your shake? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't normally drink whey protein. Oh wow! Very rarely drink it. So I will have um, a scoop of chocolate that performed brownie batter. Yeah. In my, uh, in, I'm, I'm using milk at the moment, like the green top, not the yep. blue top, um, because I'm because I'm in a gaining phase. I can I can have milk, so I mix that in in a shake and then pour it over my cocoa pops as my post-workout nice. so I kind of eat it um, and then I've got really into making a whey paste so you just you, you get a scoop of protein 25 grams something like that you put in a little bit of water yeah just enough to make a thick paste and then I pour that over things like I'll, I pour it over cream of rice quite into oh, that wow. as well as a carb sauce a lot of people like that cream of rice yeah it's yeah. like an icing on top it's very nice <laughs> um, and then I mix it in yoghurt as well yeah sometimes so yeah whey protein and I think it's not, so, I tell people, you know, it's not some kind of magic product that's going to make you, it's not like steroids, no. you know, they're gonna, you're going <laughs> to suddenly get this massive advantage. Um, it, it's just to supplement your dietary protein, because yeah. to eat, well, you were on a lot of chicken <laughs> at one point, you're probably getting your protein from that alone. Yeah. But for, for most people, you don't want to be eating loads of chicken and beef and turkey. No, that's um, what a lot of young lads think, they, they think they just have rice and chicken, or pasta and chicken, and they have it yeah. all day, every day. And it is, it's, you, as long as you throw in some shakes and get some greens in you, 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 you can Yeah, do. I think pro, the, the whey protein is just about topping it up. And so, a lot so of people live busy lifestyles. Yeah, exactly. So whey protein on the go is definitely yeah. the one as well. Yeah, 100%. Um, so I use that, and then I use creatine monohydrate. Yep. Five grams every day. Don't need to cycle on Very Very under, uh, underrated, I think, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. just... There's a lot of research behind it, though, isn't there? It's one of the supplements that, that has got a lot of evidence, an evidence base. Yeah, I definitely, you know, long term, I definitely find the benefit of having creatine mm. yeah, in yeah. any training. Yeah. It just definitely helps. Yeah, I use a pre-workout powder, so a caffeinated pre-workout powder. I do want to kind of have a break from it, though. Yeah. I think it can be good to have a bit of a caffeine detox because yeah. your tolerance can build up so much. And I think where you're, you're kind of almost stealing energy, yeah. you've got to pay that back later on. Oh, the you crash, know. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the one I use uh, at the moment, it's a Dorian Yates one, which they've got in oh, here. Oh, yes, up there, it's Dorian the, Yates. Yeah, blood I and guts. I love the Dorian Yates. What yeah. flavour are you on? I've got a pear and kiwi one, which is kind of weird flavour. Yeah, I can see but, that here. Yeah, you've got that, yeah. <laughs> I've got the bubblegum one next yeah. to it at the moment. It's lovely. I love the cola one as well. Oh, okay, I've not oh, tried that. Dorian yeah. Yates cola was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, Dorian Yates is one of my heroes. He's, he's one of my favourite bodybuilders of all time. I think he's underrated. Um, I listened to a Joe Rogan podcast, Back to Joe 
Joe Rogan. Yes. Um, with him on from a few years ago. I just love his philosophy on lifting and life in general. Yep. And he's also from Birmingham, where oh. I'm from. So like, I, I feel like he's my uh, surrogate father. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I rate Dorian. Um, so yeah, that, that, I use that, and, and that's all right. It's not too much of a crash off that, I find. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't like to really scoop heavy on the pre-workout, though. You, you get some people, again, young lads. Yeah. I've heard from some of the gym staff that they get lads going in saying, yeah, I have a triple scoop. Oh, and can I have a monster as well? Yeah. Oh, fucking hell, someone's going to have a heart attack in this gym. Um, admittedly, admittedly, here we go. <laughs> when I was on a lot of gear, I would do a pre-workout in my mouth, then wash that oh, down with Red Bull. Um, wow. And, and then I'd wonder why I'm sweating all the time. You're it's a like, bit twitchy. your heart's about to die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So banging loads of gear in, loads of caffeine, pre-workouts, wash down with Red Bulls, mm. you know. And it is, you, you're asking for it long term. You're asking for your body to just be battered. Yeah, yeah. And I think you, you might not crash like instantly and really noticeably, but you might find you're lacking energy. Your yeah. energy levels are just inconsistent potentially. So I think, yeah. You got to be a bit careful with caffeine consumption and and, and not go too crazy with it. Yeah. So I'm, I I might have a bit of a break from the pre workout, but I do like it. I think hit a caffeine. It's a it's an addiction at the end of the day. Massively, isn't it? I, I love lattes, coffees, mm. um, pre workout. I've got one in the car for after here, so when I finish here, I go straight to the gym. Um, but yeah, caffeine is the one for a lot of people, and I think, like you say, a lot of young people they get yeah. that caffeine. But I think it's a lot better than people smashing down um, monsters. So, yeah, well, I saw um, a local guy, Matt Hodgson, talking about how it's just dumb to drink yeah. fizzy drinks before yeah. you work out. You're gassy, you're bloated. Yeah. That made a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I use, use pre workout. I have used non stim pre workouts in the past, which are really good. Um, so, no caffeine. Um, but you, the main ingredient in those, I think, is citrulline malleate, which yeah. gives you the pump you know get more blood to the muscle. So, I've enjoyed using those. Um, and then, like, just basic health supplements. Like I've got um, omega three, yeah. multivitamin. I'm actually using ashwagandha at the moment. I was which, talking about um, that the other day. Was supposedly, like lowers cortisol levels, so um, you feel more calm. Feeling benefits from that? It's hard to say. I don't know. Often with those kind of supplements, you only notice the benefits when you stop using them. Yeah. That's when you notice the difference. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. If I come off it, we'll, we'll see. But it's a herbal remedy. It's it's really. It's quite cheap as well, so it's yeah. not really going to do any harm. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, we'll wrap up now because the store's about to open, yeah, so man. people can come in and get their supplements. Um, thank you very much for coming on. Thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, it's been um, pretty good. Where can they find you? So, my Instagram account is Joe Badham Fitness Coaching. Yeah. So, yeah, check it out for your uh, funny videos. <laughs> Try to <laughs> yes. put some of them out and Definitely. hopefully some, some helpful advice. Yeah, and if I do another prep and compete in the future, that'll all be documented on there. So, good. Hopefully, looking yeah. forward to it. Um, yeah, all the links will be in here. All the links are on the Perfect Body Zone Instagram. Um, so yeah, we're gonna link. We're gonna collaborate, and hopefully have you on again soon. Cheers, man. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks. You.